Hello, loyal viewers, viewer. Okay, it's just me clicking the refresh page. So it's winter. Time to snuggle up by the fire. This is the closest thing to real flames I've got. Keep warm. Dress sensibly. Looking hot in my snuggie. And remember to take your multivitamin to keep those dreaded colds and flu away. Of course, vitamins are no substitute for real, living, healthy food. So I've got a plan. Now I know a lot of you are sick of my half-baked ideas and cakes. This is a banana cake and pies. Hasn't actually been cooked at all. But today I'm going to whip you up something from this old-fashioned cookbook. Not actually all that bad. But first, an elaborate title sequence. You know, a lot of people say to me, Andy, you're pretty fit. How do you stay in shape? And you know what I say to them? Skip a meal, fatty! Of course, I'm joking. Yes, I keep active, I play sport, but diet is just as important. And as a young creative individual who likes to express himself, I figured I'd make this video to show you a recipe from my favorite cookbook. That's a lie, I've never seen this cookbook in my life. Oh, that's gonna rip my tits off. But it's old, 1918. So it's bound to be filled with wholesome, nutritious meals for your whole family to enjoy. This is the only old sort of thing I could find. You. Bitch, this isn't coming off. Today, we'll be cooking from the Goulburn Cookery Book, compiled by Mrs. Forster Rutledge. But what to cook? Excuse me. Well, let's take a look at our options. Chowder. Mmm. Chowder too. No. Clear soup. Pretty sure that's just called water. Oxtail. Fish balls. Foam sauce. Not exactly sure what I would use that for. No. Ox palate. Sea pie. Hodgepodge. Boiled sheep's head. That sounds gross. Scalloped sheep's head. <laughs> they loved their sheep's heads. Chicken cream. And chicken shape. Giblet pie. What is that? Pigeon pie. A wet devil. It actually contains four pigeons. No thank you. Croquettes of sheep's brain. Oh come on. Rice mold. Ox eyes. That sounds yummy. Love balls. Don't even want to know. Chicken panda, which surprisingly for this book doesn't actually contain a panda. But the recipe I'll be making today, toast water, is taken from the invalid and convalescent cookery section of this publication. That's right, because they don't have enough shit to worry about, they've got to deal with drinking toast water. Let's begin. Take a slice of stale bread up, oh, God. The end crust of a loaf is better. I'll be using a generic plastic bread, so I guess we just wait for this to go stale. Toast till a nice light brown, but do not let it burn. Bitch! Or the toast water will be worthless. Yeah, cause toast water is so... I, I didn't think about what I was gonna say. Put into a jug and pour about a pint and a half boiling water over it. Uh, uh. Uh. Yum. Cover it closely and let it remain until quite cold. Ow, oh, Jesus, that's hot. As warm toast water is most disagreeable. Surely I can just put this in the fridge. Strain and serve. So there it is, toast water, an old fashioned recipe to keep the cold and flu away during the winter months. And the taste? Shithouse, for the love of baby. Thank you.